So we all know Riften. It's a city in Skyrim. It's situated on the southeastern corner of the Rift, at the eastern end of Lake Honridge. With a good portion of the city actually spilling out over the water, atop large wooden piers. It's the southernmost and easternmost of all cities in Skyrim. The Rift is a beautiful part of Tamriel, with blazing colours of autumn leaves filling forest trees, sitting in a bowl, surrounded by the dramatic mountains of Skyrim. Despite the city's economic strength, in the fishing industry, in the manufacturing and exportation of really popular mead, the city holds a darker side. It's home to the notorious Thieves Guild, and it also sees much corruption in the form of the Blackbriar family. But despite the high level of corruption and the dodgy reputation, there's many people in this city who just go about their business, who work hard, and make an honest living. Tamriel is unique, and that is basically because it's full of people just going about their business, doing their own thing, living their own lives. And each of these hundreds of people have their own secrets and their own backstories to tell. You could really spend weeks just looking through books or online lore pages at each character in this series. And today, we're simply just going to look at one. Bran Shee. Bran Shee is the Dunmore shopkeeper, where he sells his miscellaneous goods at the marketplace in Riften. Now he might seem like another background character. Another Dunmore? Selling random junk in another marketplace? You might not even remember him. Now you might remember when the Dragonborn decides to join the Thieves Guild and he's asked to place a single piece of jewellery in the pocket of a poor NPC. Well Bran Shea is that poor NPC. And if the Dragonborn's successful, Bran Shea is imprisoned. And you don't really think much more of it than that. You might feel bad for the poor Dunmore as he's hauled off to the Riften Jail. But what if I was to tell you that there's a huge reason as to why Bran Shi is chosen to be imprisoned. Were the Dragonborn to approach Bran Shi before the plot to have him imprisoned, he'll also have a quest, and that is to simply recover a book from a shipwreck. And not much more thought might be given than that. To further our investigation into why I think Bran Shi was plotted against, we need to recover the book. On the frozen northern shores of Skyrim, where the waves crash against the cliffs from the Sea of Ghosts, not far from the College of Winterhold. There's a shipwreck. And not just any shipwreck, for this ship was called the Pride of Telwas. But we'll get into that a little bit later. Beneath the sunken depths of this once mighty vessel, you'll find a chest. And inside, not a book, but a journal. Brandel, I hope this text of your father's last words finds its way to your hands. I served House Telvanni as a wet nurse during your first months of life and wanted to repay your father's kindness. I've done all I can to locate you, but I regret that we'll never meet face to face. Hedraya Olin. So we have that note from the wet nurse of someone called Brandel. Who is Brandel? Well, the next few notes are from Brandel's father. 4E, 6 second seat, Midas. Is this to be the end of all things? Are we to die by the cruel barbed blades of the Argonian invasion force? After surviving the red year, struggling to dig from the ash and the rubble, and burying the thousands that died? Is this to be our epitaph? The irony of the demise glows brighter than my Sarah on this summer solstice. We brought this on ourselves. The Argonians simply answered a rallying cry incited by a millennium of suffering imposed by my kind. And so here I sit, in the crumbling basement of our family home while a thousand thousand boot-feeted echo above me. 
and the screams of the dying find their way to my ears. So falls House Silvani. But then I look into the eyes of this child, this blessing given to us the very year that Vardenfell spouted its fiery death across the land. This gift I hold in my grasp. Is it too much to wish he be given the chance to survive and keep our memories alive? This small boy, born in the midst of chaos and destruction, must carry on, if nothing else, as a reminder to other Dunmer that the Talvani were once a proud and noble people. Since the death of my wife, I haven't been able to bring myself to give my son a proper name. It never felt right without her. But my own life reaches its final hours as the luxury of time escapes my embrace. I name him now Brandel, son of Lemdren, and sole living heir to House Telvani. I will wrap him in his Telonia, his birthing swaddle, and leave his fate to Azora's will. Live with virtue and pride, Sirrah. So that's all very touching. But what does it really mean? And what's it got to do with Bran Shea? And what's it got to do with a plot to have him imprisoned at the hands of the Thieves Guild? Well, to further this investigation, we're going to have to do some research on House Telvani, which is referenced in this journal. So, House Telvani is referenced in various other Elder Scrolls games. And especially those that played the Elder Scrolls 3 Morrowind, they'll know exactly who this is. House Talvani is one of the great houses of Morrowind, known for extreme powers in the arcane arts, but also described as unconventional, as they're xenophobic and they shun contact with any outsiders and believe in rightful ownership of slaves, historically owning many Argonians and Kashyyyks. And naturally, oppression and slavery is often met with rebellion and war, and in this occasion, it was called the Accession War, otherwise known as the Argonian Invasion. So this war took place in the early 4th era, between the Argonians of Black Marsh and the Dunmer of Morrowind. During this time, the An Salil was an Argorian political faction presumed to be based in Lilmoth in Black Marsh, and it comprised entirely of Argonians. The Ancelil campaigned against the great houses of Morrowind, and they would probably have not stood a chance were it not the eruption of Red Mountain. Now there are a lot of references to the eruption of Red Mountain in Skyrim. It can be seen through the emigration of the Dunmer, or the apparent collapse of the town of Winterhold. So this pretty much caused the death of countless Dunmer, and essentially weakened their entire country. And so the Ancelil and the rest of the Argonian rebellion were able to take advantage of this weakening and pushed on to destroy many of the great houses of Morrowind. So where does Bran Shea fit into this? Well as the Argonians progressed into Morrowind destroying much of the great houses, and rightfully so, because those great houses had previously invaded and kidnapped many Argonians to sell into slavery. House Tilvani was one of those great Morrowind houses that was attacked. Referring back to the journal below the decks of the sunken pride of Telvos, we have the emotional words of the father, Lindrin, who speaks of the destruction of his house at the hands of the Argonian. A wounded and emotional Lindrin has blocked himself in the basement of his once proud house. He's watched all his friends and all his family die around him, including his wife. And all he has left is his son, who remains wrapped in his arms. Knowing that his life's about to end, Lindrum looks back at the actions of his family in deep regret and keeps his words written down in the journal so his son can read them when he comes of age. Lindrum eventually dies with his son Brandile in his arms, but before any harm can come to the child, the wet nurse of Brando, Hydra Olin, takes the child to safety. Olin was always grateful for the kind way she was treated by House Tilvani and their services. So she and some other surviving members 
escaped away on the Pride of Telvos. The Pride of Telvos was one of the great vessels of the House Telvanni, and it was most likely named after the wizard tower, Telvos on Vardenfell. However, despite its reputation, it was clearly no match for the rocky shores of the Sea of Ghosts on the north coast of Skyrim, where it ran aground. And within the chaos, the child Brandil, who was being kept safe by Olin, was lost. Olin spent days, weeks, months, years looking for the child, but she never found him. And this is because the child was found by someone else, an Argonian couple who were travelling northern Skyrim and they took him back to Blackmarsh where they raised him. So there's a bit of irony there that Brandil was raised back in Blackmarsh by Argonians, the same race that murdered his family and chased him from his home. And as you probably imagine by now, Brandil, which is a Dunmore name, was changed to an Argonian name of Branche. Branche was raised well and grew up with decency, but naturally, he grew to become curious of where he came from. And after learning about his past and where the Argonian couple found him, Branche returned to Skyrim. He opened a stall in the Riften Market, and eventually rumour gave word to the wet nurse and the wreckage of the Pride of Telvos. Now where the Dragonborn to complete the quest Distant Memories and return the journal to Branche? This would confirm his suspicions that he is in fact a descendant and a rightful heir to House Telvanni. For Lindrum wrote in the journal to Brando, now known as Branchi, The luxury of time escapes my embrace. I name him now Brando, son of Lindrin, and sole living heir to House Telvanni. So after we've completed this investigation, we've managed to confirm that Branchi, originally named Brando, was son of Lindrin and sole living heir to the riches and lands of House Tilvani. Originally believed that House Tilvani was completely destroyed by the Argonians, it is now known that in Elder Scrolls lore, the House Tilvani is still a great and thriving house in Morrowind during the events of the fourth year of 201. And another little side note is we can work out Branche's age. Going through the records of House Tilvani, we find that Brandil was born on 4th era of year 5. With the events of Skyrim taking place in the 4th era 201, that would make Branchi 196 years old. Not to be surprised, because Dunmar do live far longer than men. With that all said and done, we've managed to look to some character history of Branchi and explore some Elder Scrolls lore, point out some fun facts, as one of my fellow YouTube friends likes to call them, but finally, I'm going to tell you why I think the Thieves Guild were instructed to have Branche in prison. As I stated, although in the journal, although Lindrum believes that his house had fallen, it's now known to be Elder Scrolls lore that presently, during this time, House Tilvani is still strong and influential in Morrowind. So Brandil will be sitting on quite a pretty penny. Back in Morrowind, at House Tilvani, it's currently unknown who sits at the seat of House Tilvani. But as our old friend Sheev once wisely stated, those with power are afraid to lose it. So you would imagine word would reach the ears of those in power at House Tilvani that Bran Shee, known as Brandel, a Dunmer, and descendant to the riches and estates of House Tilvani, was looking into his family heritage. Now it's never clearly stated, but what I believe is those in charge at House Telvanni are uncomfortable with the prospect of having to share or give away their money to a long lost heir. Naturally, you would recruit mercenaries, and in this form I think they recruited the Thieves Guild to have Bran Shee imprisoned. Well, to be fair, knowing the historical atrocities committed by House Telvanni, I guess Bran Shee should be grateful that they didn't hire the Dark Brotherhood. So should the Dragonborn look to join the Thieves' Guild and ask to place an item of jewellery in the pocket of Bran Shea, you might want to think twice from now on. Bran Shea is a decent fellow with a tragic past who only had a curiosity in his family history and the only crime that he ever really committed 
is claiming that he sells the finest goods from Morrowind, when in actuality, he just really sells junk. So maybe let him off the hook, and allow him to return to Morrowind to House Tilvani to receive his official titles and estates. For within the journal of Branche's father, he writes, We brought this upon ourselves. The Argonians are simply answering a rallying cry, enated by a millennia of suffrage imposed by my kind. For despite the atrocities committed by House Tilvani, it's clear to see, in Lendrum's last moments, the regret of what they have committed. And it's clear to see this decency passed on to Bran Shea. Were Bran Shea to return to House Telvanni to lead, a kinder heart can be only a good thing. For in the words of Lendrum, father of Brando, now known as Bran Shea, live with virtue and pride, Sarah. <laughs>